Today's topic is synchronous FIFO. So before going to synchronous FIFO, I want you to go to check out my FIFO video where I made how a FIFO is used in a chip design and what it's used in mismatch data rate synchronization and data with mismatch. And also I've discussed about the operations and the timing diagram. Please check the video before going through this. So in synchronous FIFO, there is a single clock that is used for both write and read operations. The data flow and associated control logic operates in a single clock domain. So we know that synchronous FIFO is used to store the data temporarily where the read and write operations can happen at a different point of time. But this time is managed by a single clock. So there's a single clock. That's the whole story about it. And the input ports and output ports have been discussed earlier. They are similar. So I'm going to go through again a clock and reset for resetting the FIFO so it, um, it makes write pointer and data everything to zero and it's uh, we can use it as uh, active or inactive no problem um, so we have write enable read enable so that we can write and read and write pointer to check where's the where's the reading is happening and read data so getting the output what's in the FIFO write data right into the FIFO and FIFO full and FIFO empty indicates that FIFO is full and FIFO is empty and this is two important extra additions uh, which prevents the data loss how it prevents the data loss we're gonna see it so it's almost full and almost empty so what's almost full and almost empty so if you have written up to uh, there are eight locations over here if you are written up to six then it's almost full for my condition it's about six you can keep it to seven no problem uh, so why are we using almost full and almost empty so we are using almost full and almost empty to avoid overrun and avoid underrun what's our overrun and underrun overrun is to write into a FIFO which is full which is not acceptable and what is meant by underrun reading from an empty FIFO there's nothing in the FIFO and we are reading it so we need to avoid this so we are going to use almost full and almost empty so when we have the write enable signal high and it's almost full then we can deassert or make it low so that we can avoid the data transmission or data loss while this write enable it goes low and still the data is flowing so these are major use of almost full and almost empty it's better to use almost full and almost empty we never completely write in a FIFO in, during a design so that we will have no data loss so be careful these are most major signals and coming uh, coming to uh, design aspect so I'm gonna share you the code if you want just mail me and comment below and so we have a write pointer read pointer write pointer will increment when write enable is high and write pointer is not pointing to almost full that's p4 depth minus one i have chosen at seven and that's your wish you can choose six or five that's what you want so whenever write enable is high and it's not full or almost full then I'll increment the pointer and the similar case with the read pointer. So what's going to decide the operations? So I'm going to take a case statement for it and I'm going to use write enable, read enable and based on write enable or read enable, I'll count up. If it's write enable, that means if you want to write into the FIFO, I will increase this variable and count the depth of it. If it's depth equal to the almost full, I'll stop and say it's full and if it's zero it's empty you know it so whenever I read I'll reduce the count so that I will know where the pointer is so this is how we are gonna design a synchronous FIFO and I'm gonna also explain you about the timing diagram so here's the timing diagram of a asynchronous FIFO no synchronous FIFO sorry so the clock is there whenever the write enable is high you're gonna write pointer it so it will be incremented by one so we have incremented it one again the write enable is high for three clock cycles two clock cycles and we have incremented it twice similar case with read enable so it's high for three clock cycles we have incremented it one two three and we are taking the data data zero data one data two
So this is how a basic synchronous FIFO works. So if you have any doubts, please comment down below and I'm gonna uh, take the class of asynchronous FIFO too, but asynchronous FIFO uh, requires uh, understanding in gray and binary pointer and synchronization, which I'll deal with in next. After that, I'll go with the asynchronous FIFO. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe for more videos.